We're naming this episode Chop, Cuss, Rebuild. Because we're going to do a little chopping, a little bit of cussing. Mm. Throw shit everywhere. And rebuilding. Now, at the end, we're going to be setting the cab on the chassis, which is a big step in the custom automotive industry, setting your cab on your chassis. But let's get busy. Remember when I said I had six inches left to play with and I was going to add it into the bed? Well, here's my plan. I've changed it quite a bit. Look at there. Six inches for that drive shaft to reach that transmission. Now, I don't know if it was dumb luck. I don't know if the good Lord was looking after me. But I'll tell you one thing, it wasn't, it wasn't skill because I've never been in this scenario, that's just how it happened out. So we'll just go with it. We need to cut six inches out of this frame exactly. Not perfectly exactly, but really, really close. Now there used to be a simple way you do it in the automotive industry, even in some, I don't know, uh, furniture building industries. But you need to six inches out, you get your roll of tape. Roll of tape, is, I mean, they have some, two inches would be perfect, and then some are inch and a half. Two inches, you just run three strips of tape exactly side by side, and that would give you six inches across there. Run one, run the next one touching that edge, and the next one touching that edge, and that'd give you six inches. But here's a problem that I have just found out. For some reason, the tape industry decided to go, I guess, metric. So now, instead of this being an inch and a half, it's like one notch over from an inch and a half, whatever that comes out metric. I don't know, I do all my stuff the old school way in the inches and feet. <laughs> so, what I had to do, I'm gonna use my pencil for a pointer. I put one piece of tape. I found out that these two holes, was a little bit, see look, I'm right at the edge of that hole and right at the edge of that hole. That's roughly right at six inches apart, them two holes. So I use them on both sides where I'd be the same. So anyhow, I ran one piece of I ran one piece of tape over here, then I ran one piece of tape in the center of my six inches. Then I had to you can't really use a measuring tape because it don't lay exactly flat. It's hard unless you have two people. So get you a flat tape like a measuring stick and just measure. Measure, 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 measure. If you have a long distance, Measure top, measure the bottom, measure a couple times in the middle. Your tape may be curved, you know, you don't know. So anyhow, measure, 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 measure. Mark it straight down. And still, if you need to get six inches exactly, I'm gonna take a sharp knife, razor blade, and cut down this pencil line, right, right down that pencil line. Then I'm gonna pull this side here off. Joe, why are you going to pull that side off? Well, if you make a mistake, I see a lot of people do that. They mess around and cut this side. Well, I'm going to pull this side off and cut on this side. Why are you going to do that, Joe? Because if I cut here, your, your blade is going to take out a little bit of metal, maybe a sixteenth of an inch. So if I just willy-nilly down this line, then I come over here and I willy-nilly down the outside of this line, I'm going to have uh, a sixteenth or more difference. So if I cut on this side of my measurement and then I come over here, then I cut on that side of my measurement, then I'm cutting some off of this side and leaving some on this side. So it'll work out exactly six inches. She is cut. Eat your heart out, Ian Roussel. I did it. Six inches, six inches. I put me a little uh, file in there and clamped it. It still dropped. You seen it? Boom. 
but that's okay. I, did, I made sure at the end, I didn't have my blade jammed up in there all the way. I just ran the very edge of that blade on it. That way, when it did drop, it didn't pinch my blade and throw shit everywhere. The only one thing I see, really, is this control module is going to get really close to this little funky spot, for some reason, on this gas tank. Now here's one thing you need to know before you start cutting or welding around a gas tank. These are the two fuel lines. One comes in, one goes out. I taped them up good. But there's also one other thing. This line right here, this plastic. You wouldn't think nothing of it. There's no fuel drips out. But this line actually comes over and goes to your evap tank. All your fumes in your gas tank run through this, it cleans them, then they go through this line all the way around, all the way up to your intake, and it sucks them back in, feeds them through the motor. The thing is, it's not gas that's explosive, it's the fumes. When I was 12, I worked for a mechanic, and all I did, I had a big bucket of gas, and I cleaned parts in it for him. He'd take stuff off, I'd clean it out, clean it, give it back to him. He walked by with a cigar, throw it in the gas and it would just I'd jump and it would just put it out and uh, and that's what he told me at 12 years old yeah that's right I was working when I was 12 years old so millennials I don't want to hear shit about you and your school loan debt I have solved some problems but I see a problem I think I can fix it but I got, I got questions I got my point stick I got the frame cut, slid together clamped, slid together clamped. I measured on the top, I actually measured from that hole to where was it? That hole right there. I measured them on both sides or straight. And on the bottom, I measured from that hole to I think that hole or that hole. Anyhow, dead measurement, dead measurement. See, I got a little bit of gap there. That ain't no problem. Really and truly, most fabricators leave a gap fill it up with weld so that that's good but where i have noticed my one problem is what i was trying to fix without spending any money the dreaded drive shaft now cutting it six inches this does line exactly up with that but coming to find out this is a little bit different boat pattern than that no problem I can uh, swap these out with my other drive shaft, but then, you know, I get to look at them like, what the hell is this? Why does it have double U-joints? I've never really came across that. Is that because it had a swing bearing? Or, I don't know, what's the difference between this on a swing bearing and this on a drive shaft? Is that going to create a problem? If it does, I'll just have to cut a drive shaft. So my plan of saving that money might just have been wiped out. <laughs> but I'm going to keep moving forwards. I'm going to grind this and weld it. If it's hot and you unclamp it, it's gonna try to relax on you. Let it cool down completely. Cut the frame, took six inches out, weld it back together. Welded a plate on the inside. Ooh. 0, 0.0, 0. 0. 0.0. I have repurposed the frame section I cut out. Used it. On my transmission mount see it was uh, narrower up there where it was mounted before and so that i'm gonna slide out tack 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 tack
uh, clean them up pretty nice. That's the way we always did it with undercoating on cars when you get ready to cut quarter panels and stuff off. But now they don't stuff, they just come right now. It's not a lot to unhook, but there is a few things. I'm, I think I'm gonna leave this teardown job to the guys whose things were built to carry. back at the tub i'm actually gonna cut now i want to keep this whole thing if possible i don't want to have to cut across it or try to figure something out i want to keep this whole thing and then my door start right along there or that way but look it goes down if it goes straight down it's going to run to the fender so what i'm going to do i'm going to drill me a little hole in this corner drill me a little hole right there drill me a little hole right there and that outside to the drill holes just play connect the dot. Cut, 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 cut. Here's a point of no return. I'm either screwing up a really good tub or I'm building something epic. It could go either way. <laughs> Ian Roussel, baby. Ian Roussel. This ain't no Texas metal. It's Ian Roussel. <laughs> brake thing is hitting the top of the transmission I can cut that down come down a couple more inches but I really need a lot more than that it's like I gained an inch four inches all right, after going up and down about 10 times, trimming, 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 I still need to do some more trimming. <laughs> but, I, but I got the cab sitting. She is sitting on uh, two by fours on all four spots and centered up, and I got a couple of clamps holding it in place. Now, I'm going to have to trim. I've got all this clearing. I'm going to have to build me a doghouse. But look, my drive shaft is sitting right on this brace right there. So I'm going to have to come in here and, and cut this thing, I guess, up. Maybe a little arch, maybe just up and straight across or something like that to give me clearance because I'm sitting right on it. Bam. 
But what I want to do, I want to hang the fender on it just to see, just to make it look like something. I'm going to have to trim that off to get it to go down far enough. That motor's sitting perfect. Tire straight up and down from the wheel well. It's an inch and a half off of the frame. Starting to look like something. All right, I guess that's gonna wrap this one up. Be sure and subscribe and like. I've been trying something new. It takes me about two weeks to get one of these videos out due to the time it takes for me to work on this joker and make the video. So what I've been doing in between videos, I'm gonna drop a little short video, probably a minute, maybe two minute of like a major step or something. I put one out there last week just to test the water, keep you informed what was going on so you won't forget about me. But anyhow, stay tuned, come back and see me. We'll see you on the next one when we make this thing one solid four-door Jeep. Thanks for watching.